All right, thank you, Wiz. I would like us all to think for 10 minutes about how AI can help support dementia caregivers. So in the US, Alzheimer's and dementia um, produce a really heavy burden on informal caregivers, um, much more so than burdens of other chronic diseases. Now, just to get definitions out of the way at the beginning, Alzheimer's is an actual brain disease. Dementia is a term for symptoms like decline in memory and reasoning skills. I'm kind of going to use these interchangeably throughout this presentation, but just know they're, they're slightly different. So Alzheimer's dementia is a huge problem in the U.S. today. As of 2023, it was estimated that about 7 million people are living with this condition, with about 11 million people um, giving them unpaid or informal day-to-day -day care. In other words, about 18 billion hours of unpaid care per year. So huge, huge activity here. And it's a growing problem. These numbers are expected to double by 2060. In fact, this past week, the Wall Street Journal ran a whole piece about how this is a growing problem over time. As millennials are hitting age and boomers are aging, more and more people are going to be facing these caregiving situations. So if we're gonna build something to help the typical informal caregiver, who let's understand who they are. Um, first of all, they're likely to be a woman. They're likely to live with the dementia patient, be a primary breadwinner. Most of them are still working. Many are caring for a loved one and most are not college graduates. Many are not wealthy. So we need to really be, keep, be keeping these characteristics in mind when we think about what to build. And what kind of care do informal caregivers provide? It's all the day-to-day -day, um, aspects of living. So it could be things like personal hygiene, feeding, uh, arguing with insurance companies, coordinating doctor's appointments, healthcare, medication, you know, all of it um, is, are things that caregivers have to deal with. And it's known to be an incredibly stressful thing for people who have to give informal care. You know, it's hard to find care and support. Many are juggling work or child care or other, other things. You know, they face complex medical situations and all while having to watch um, a loved one's health deteriorate. So it's very, very stressful. And um, it's been shown that this actually impacts caregivers' health. So what are some use cases for AI when it comes to caregivers? How, how might this help them? So one thing it could do is provide advice for everyday challenging caregiving situations. It might provide emotional support when they're going through a tough time, clarify medical concepts, although of course it's very important to be clear it's not giving medical advice, and locating and understanding resources. So these translate directly into features we're gonna want to have in our chatbot. First, for everyday caregiving situations, we wanna speak in simple language and make it easy to use, not hard to learn. For emotional support, we want to be empathetic, talk with the user, don't just go on and on and talk at them. We want to be trustworthy, cite sources so that users know where information is coming from. And finally, to personalize it with local information so they can really find things that are relevant for their situation. When looking for vetted, trustworthy data, um, I took a look at, you know, things like Mayo Clinic, Alzheimer's Society, Alzheimer's Association, and um, gathered data from sources that are known to be leading experts either in Alzheimer's as a medical condition or in caregiving or both. Um, our chatbot is also going to use an API um, from the Administration for Community Living called the Elder Care Locator. Now, this is a set of APIs where if you provide a zip code or a city, it's going to give you all the resources in your area. So particularly useful for a use case like this. So with that in mind, let's think a little bit about how we're going to build up this chatbot. Um, first, you know, we have the chatbot greet the user. The user asks a question. When we ask a question, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to retrieve data from our database of vetted information. So we have a history aware retriever. Second, we're going to call that API and let the LLM decide if it's going to be um, useful for us to include any resources in our response. Of course, once we do that, um, we are ready to send the output of the tool, if any, the history aware retrieval, so our, our data sources, 
and our chat history all to our question answering module to generate an answer. But we're not gonna stop there because it's really important that anything that we generate is really reliable. Uh, so we send over the answer to a fact checking guardrail that's going to check our information um, against our answer and make sure that everything is both grounded and accurate. If it's not, we fix it before we send it back to the user. Otherwise, we're ready to send out our chatbot response with cited sources and continue the conversation. So here's how it's going to look. Um, for the demo, let's think about a, a user. So I'm going to, um, it's a completely imaginary, you know, scenario based on the characteristics of a typical Alzheimer's caregiver, but our persona is Sue. She's 53 years old. She has two teenagers at home. She works full time and she's worried about her mom. Her mom was recently diagnosed with early stage Alzheimer's and, you know, Sue, Sue is looking for help. So let's see if our AI can help her. So the average time to start, start answering in the system was typically about two seconds. But of course, since it's a live demo, it's going to be longer. All right, let me try that again. In the meantime, we can take a look at some of the characteristics. We can see that, okay. I'm glad that I pulled this up because the Elder Care API is apparently timing out on me right now, but let's still take a look at what this chatbot is going to look like. Um, first, you know, it's going to personalize the conversation. Second, it's going to ask uh, clarifying questions. And third, it's going to actually offer sources. So if, it, if you click on these links, it's going to lead you exactly to where it's getting the information from. So let's take a look at the tech stack that we're using here. Um, for tool, call, tool calling and the history aware retriever, I'm using Haiku, which is an anthropic model, a small anthropic model. For the larger question answering components, I'm using a heavier weight model. So I'm using Anthropic Sonic 3.5 for question answering, fact checking, and fact fixing. Uh, for the vector database, I'm using the Ensemble Retriever and a Quadrant database with semantic chunking and many other components for the front end. It's Chainlit um, for tracing, Langsmith, evals are Ragus, and other components of this kind. So when we think about how this is working, we will think want to think about what would be next in order to bring this to production. Now, first, we want to create memory across chats. The current version has memory within the chat, um, but we want to make sure that this is personalized for users as they go from chat to chat. Second, we would want to be thinking about serving. Um, this is running on my local laptop, uh, or not running at the moment, as the case may be. But it's important to bring this to where a user is. And so creating a mobile experience might be right. We would want to talk to users and get that information about what is best. And second, we want to think about the challenges of bringing something like this to production. Uh, data privacy would be key because we're likely to be talking about um, health situations of a really personal nature. Cost considerations are very important. Um, you know, a lot of dementia caregiving societies are nonprofits. And so we would want to think about how to offer um, a low cost model. And finally, user adoption and outreach would be key considerations. Again, we don't want this to be an additional task for caregivers. We want this to be something that is helpful to them and eases the load. Um, so with that, I will take questions. <laughs> 